No, John Carpenter would have been 70 this week. But he's not dead. Well, someone should tell Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> oh, here's the show. <laughs> Well, that was, well different, that was something new. Um, hello, hello. Welcome to the Big Damn Cast number eighty-two. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's amazing to think we would have been eighty-two this week. Yeah, had we not not died at some point. <laughs> uh, I'm Big Damn Chris, aka Six. Count them six multi-pack salt and vinegars, and they should not be sold separately. I'm Big Damn Matt, a.k.a. Three Raccoons in a Jumpsuit, trying to fool you. <laughs> Are they wearing a moustache? Or have they gone for the hat and glasses combo? Uh, the hat and glasses, oh, classic. 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 With it's a, a little classic. nose on as well. <laughs> Are they, they wearing, the, they wearing the, the Davy the Crockett style hat, so it looks like they're wearing a raccoon skin hat? No, it's a trilby, because they think they're a pickup artist. Ah, uh, or an internet reviewer. <laughs> hey! Uh, what's right. the difference in today's climate? <laughs> yeah, go, 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 go. As long as there's a skull on his shelf in the back, I'm sure his intentions are pure. <laughs> So, you're watching uh, nothing, but you are listening to the Big Damn Cast. Uh, Hello. This week has been a relatively quiet week. Yeah. So, we're going to play We're gonna play catch-up, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Matt's going to catch up with a Netflix smash hit. Netflix's largest film production Why to date. Why condense smash hit <laughs> into a portmanteau of, of one Well, word. a sequel's been greenlit, so it must be good. Yeah, yeah. We're talking yeah. bright. I'm going to give you a spoiler-free, because I feel it should be spoiler-free unless we do a specific spoiler-filled version anyway, because yeah. the show's best if you don't know anything about it. Because I've still not watched it, Tom. A spoiler-free... For, for Tom Monty. A spoiler-free um, um, review of Black Mirror Series 3, because uh, I'm catching up. I want to watch some Series 4 by Jingo, and I found some time this week to watch the 4 I haven't seen a Series 3. So, uh, let's consider that a recap for those who haven't been following it at all. Okay. And then, we're going to catch up with a dear friend and the poor unfortunate artist who keeps seeing this dear friend. That's right. David's back. Oh no! Hide neath your tablas. <laughs> um, that's French for tables. Did you know that? Ouer le stade. Le singe et sur la table. Ouer le plume de matins. <laughs> As well, you know. <laughs> right, let's 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 kick off with a bit of Black Mirror, as no um, no doubt the majority of the people listening to this is probably doing it on a phone or a laptop and are gazing upon a black mirror. Gaze into the black mirror. Series four dropped like a ton of antidepressants onto Netflix toward the end of December. Uh, I think they were there to cure what everyone else was feeling after watching the thing you're going to talk about. But anyway, um, <laughs> whoop. <laughs> Excuse me, do you have Prince Albert McCain? <laughs> Black Mirror, um, series He's four. Be doing that for the rest of the week now. I watched it again last <laughs> night. The the good one. I'll leave that up to the listener to figure out. Uh, the twenty seventeen one. I'm going to. Uh, I'm I'm going to get around to series four soon. The one that dropped over Christmas, but it made me finally catch up to series three. Which, if you're a regular listener to the show. It's probably a bugbear of yours, because you lot have your fingers on the pop culture pulse, and we, the dirty shart artists... We have our fingers up our bums. Yeah, stopping the sharts, you see. <laughs> Don't wish to dirty the microphone. And I it's can't a... afford corks. Yeah. <laughs> They're so expensive since Brexit. <laughs> That's true. It's a true All thing. All that Spanish cork. If you work in the cork industry right now, you're going... Preach it, guys. It's gonna be. It's gonna. It's gotta be Spanish cock because it's soft on your bum. There was a little Spanish cock. <laughs> um, I finally caught up with the rest of series three. Those regular listeners will know that I watched the first two, and Matt watched the first two. We talked the about them a bit, two? and then other things happened in our lives, and we never carried on. But this week, I'm back off Panto, so I had a lot of free time at first. <laughs> so I decided to watch some television whilst wallowing in the fact I had no upcoming gigs. And I enjoyed uh, immensely. Um, oh god, what's the first of the ones I watched? The first, uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, what's it? Shut up and dance. Mm -hmm. Then San Junipero. Then Man Against Fire. And then what's the last one called? Oh my god, the, uh, the Hate in the Nation. Oh yeah. Um, Absolutely brilliant. Like, I have a rough really idea good. what all these are about. I don't know. I can't remember what Man Against Fire is about, but correct me if I'm wrong. 
Yes. She up and dances a bunch of people being expected to do stuff via social media. Sort of, yes. San Junipero is like a 80s retro... <clears throat> um, how much could this guy say without I being spoilers? A, a, an 80s retro VR world? Sort With of. Yeah. It, it's quite early. Quite early on in the episode, <laughs> you get an indication that it's not partic- It's not um, likely a real place. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and I can't remember. What, I can't remember what Man Against Fire is about. And um, hating the nation is rogue nano drones. Sort of going after people who get shit on social media. Sort of, yeah. It's We'll go one by one, but this, this is my spoiler-free <clears throat> thoughts. Again, if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about, but if you haven't, I don't want to ruin it. I'd rather you go in cold. That is the wonder of Black Mirror, and and um, and we've already I, talked about yeah. uh, Nosediving Playlist. <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll, touch, we'll touch on them real, real quick, though. I don't want to. Um, <clears throat> oh, you don't want to touch on... Don't. Don't even. Okay. Don't. Not in today's climate. Okay, okay. I was going to say Wyatt Russell. But fine. Oh well, well um, actually, now you say it, he's a handsome guy. Anyway, <laughs> but first, um, from a mighty chin, from a mighty chin to <laughs> another mighty first, chin. First, from acting nepotism to acting nepotism. Bryce Dallas Howard, of course, hey. starred in those dive. I, I, they're both very talented people. I'm taking the piss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about fucking nepotism in Hollywood for the next item. Oh yes, sort of. Uh, nose oh, dive yeah. is the one that was set in uh, not too distant future, where everybody essentially rated other people, their experience with other people through an app. Yeah, it was like if if Uber was people, people were Uber. So basically, your social media likes um, dictate, dictate your, your social, social status standing, yeah. and and whether or not you are rewarded accordingly, whether or not you're allowed to go to certain restaurants and what, coffee shops. What jobs you can have. Yeah. Uh, what services you can use. It was a wonderful commentary based on everybody's over-reliance on approval. Social media approval. Yeah. Like, and I think it, I think it was very much trying to target not so much our generation, like, it's a couple of generations below us are the ones who are like, follow for follow, like for like. Yeah. I can give a shit. That's I sort of quid know. pro quo yeah, like, um, I, we relationship. Put, we put stuff out there just to put stuff out there. Like, oh, I've got a thought. Oh, I've got a joke. Oh, I'm going to post a poll about the fast food rockers because why not? <laughs> Fucking hell. That, weirdly, the most successful Twitter poll I've ever done. It was three hours long and it got like, a really big chunk of votes in that time. I think you just had a lot of people taking a shit in those three hours. Hey, Kentucky Fried Chicken won. So. That's the only time that <clears> I <throat> check my Twitter polls. Dirty. I use a Twitter poll to get the shit out. Hey! There's corks in the way. I've got to try and scrape them. Should I scrunch or should I fold? <laughs> God. Potty! Um, Nose Dive was wonderful. Uh, wonderful because it was... It wasn't scary. It wasn't a, like a, oh, this could happen to you, Black Mirror. It was a... This is already happening to a lot of people. Yeah. And maybe now they'll think about how unnecessarily reliant they are on this platform to judge. Like, cause it's about judging books by the covers and it's about, you don't need approval. Live. Yeah. Live, for Christ's sake. Like, don't don't wait for other people to tell you you're doing okay. Like, it just looks exhausting. Yeah. Part of that society. But, but what it does expertly is, is what a lot of Black Mirror does really well, which is the creeping sense of dread over the course of the episode. Yeah. Because once <clears> you kind of get the, oh, this is the this is the morality tale, this is the, the fable of the week, you just start to bathe in the story. Yeah. Sometimes it's the way around. You bathe in the story the entire time, and then at the end you go, oh, it was about that. But this one, you know what it's about pretty much up front, and then it's uh, creepy as sin. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which is a theme this series does really well, but Bryce Dallas Howard in particular is excellent. Alice Eve is the really vapid friend. Oh, yeah. So good. Um, but that's great, and it's got a really an upbeat ending, considering it's also really depressing. Yeah. Um, Playtest. Playtest, I think, is Black Mirror's first attempt to just screw it. We're gonna be, a, we're gonna be scary. Like, this hour is gonna be about just trying to scare you. Yeah. Um, because it was about horror video games and virtual reality and then VR. And, uh, and a, a wonderful lead character played by Wyatt Russell, who was, who's an American sort of traveller who's stuck in the UK a bit and he met a girl and he's kind of bunky with her and then he's like, oh, I need some money and I want to get back home and I need to call my mum and everything. You get the sense that he's avoiding something back home, family related. and Yeah. He's trying to distract himself by going off on an adventure and isn't this lovely and aren't I having a great time, you know, having sex and getting drunk in England. This is amazing. Yay! But then the girl is, uh, if I remember correctly, she's a journalist, isn't she, for a games magazine and she's like, right, I, yeah. we can't go to this play test thing, this augmented reality play test. We're not allowed to go. But if you go, 
and you just turn this thing on your phone, record as much as you can, like audio or whatever, it's, I, I'll be able to pay you, like we can pay you for it. What could possibly go wrong? Um, spider made of human face. And <laughs> some really shocking imagery and some obvious nods to like Resident Evil and things like that. Particularly really nice um, dialogue. Uh, uh, not even a wink. I think it was more like it was batting in the balls to um, Bioshock at one point. Yeah. There's it's, a, a... It, it's, it's been, it was written by Charlie Brooker and it's cl- and directed by Dan Trachenberg, who did oh, okay. uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yeah. And the Portal, um, the the Portal fan film. Ah. So it's it's very much made from that place of, of love of, yeah, we like genre and we really mm. fucking love video games and we are going to get away with referencing them as much as we possibly can. And it's also fairly clear that um, the games developer uh, character in it mm. is clearly based <laughs> on Hideo, Hideo Kojima. Kojima. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a fantastic piece of television. That was where we got up to. Shut Up and Dance um, is, again, it's, it's playing on social media fears in a way. Uh, young man does something um, n- naughty in front of his laptop, as a young teenage boy with a laptop would do. Oh, yeah, yeah. And suddenly a message appears showing him an excerpt of the video of what he just did, saying, we're going to show everyone... <laughs> Unless you text this number now. So he texts his number to this this place. So he messages the number. Next thing you know, he's receiving instructions. He's having to go places. He's having to make deliveries. He's having to leave work at the drop of a hat because he's got to get somewhere before the time runs out. Mm-hmm. Or everything's going to go out there. Um, he meets a couple of other people along the way as part of his tasks who are clearly under the same forced like chores. And you just get this sense of what the hell is going on? Mm. And it just is, is you know that he knows that the end's in sight because at least one person he meets like is given their last thing during his encounter with them. He's like, okay, so if I just do this stuff, eventually they'll let me go. But how long are they going to keep him around for? And what exactly have they got planned for him? It's fucking tense hour of television. It's really tense because it's obviously playing on teenage fears of like you know what people will think of you and and reputation and obviously he's a teenager he's not comfortable with his sexuality yet so it's like yeah you know he's terrified the idea of people thinking of him like jerking off and everything just pounding it just pounding it but as the story goes on um you sort of see the, the other things that people have done that they that they've got on them and you realize that like maybe it's not that bad by the end of the story, you sort of realise how how big a crimes everyone is sort of committed in the eyes of the people behind this, and, yeah. and why they're doing it, and why they're making them do it. And it's both a satisfying and a really fucking uncomfortable uh, wrap up to the story. Um, it's basically if Anonymous and 4chan were the villain in a sci-fi. Oh, awesome! It's oh, it's creepy. It's it's wonderfully done, and and it, it's yeah. I think it's the tensest of all the Black Mirrors. Like it, it's purposely there to make you feel horrible the entire time, which is why I think the next episode, San Junipero, has been like touted as the best one until this year when USS Callister apparently is everyone's favourite now. But <laughs> um, San Junipero is uh, a kind of meek, you know, sort of like wears the blouse and jumper and big glasses, you know, a mousy-haired girl. Meets the really kind of hip, like, you know, big hair, big jackets, girl in a club and at the arcade. They really hit it off, but they really shouldn't spend time together because one of them's getting married soon and, you know, it wouldn't be right. And oh, I can't stay with you too much. We'll tell you what, come back. Every time you're back here, let's meet up. And more and more they spend time to spend together, the more and more it's obvious these two would make an absolutely adorable couple and they need to give it a go. Give it a go, give it a go, give it a, give it a, give it a go. With every subsequent return to the club each weekend, the era shifts slightly. So quite early on, and this is what, I know you're worried about spoilers, but it's not so much spoilers. Quite early on, you realise this isn't real, is it? They're yeah. not aging. Okay, and I, I went into it thinking, oh, is this? Are they doing an episode set in um, Second Life or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Well, kind of. In a way. In a way. <laughs> um, it's a straight up romance story. There yeah. is, there is the science fiction element is the setting. It's more like Be Right Back. Like Be Right Back played on a couple of 
subtle horror ideas as it went on. Like AI. Yeah, the last one I watched was Be Right Back, and I just had to have a good little lie. Yeah, like, like the horror comes in in terms of the AI, and it gets you, the viewer, thinking, oh my god, how far is this, and how morbid is this, really, when you take a step back and look yeah. at what's happening. But that episode is played completely as a romance. Like, it's not it's not what an episode with a villain. It's no, it's, it's no, a no. love story about grief and not being able to move on. Yeah, um, this is very much a love story about two people whose lives have dictated to this point that no, 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 you, no, don't, don't do it. It's not worth the hassle. Going fuck it. We're going to give it a try, and what that's like. Um, to say any more is to ruin it. I don't, I don't share everyone's view online from 2016 of it being the best ever Black Mirror, I still think um, Be Right Back and 15 Million Merits take some beating, if I'm honest. Those are still, I think, my favourites. Yeah. But it's really, really good, and I can see why it's a lot of people's favourite. And it's definitely a relief after watching Shut Up and Dance. If you've been, <laughs> if you're binging it, it's like, oh my god, this one's a love story. Oh, thank god. Oh, thank god. Do you know that's, what I mean? That's what's kept me from watching, <laughs> from, from watching it, because it's just... A lot of shows I can just sit down and binge on, but I can't Black Mirror because it's just... anthology, man. Spread it out. And also, it just kicks you <coughs> in the bollocks every five minutes. What's well, so that? We're recording this on Tuesday 16th. Um, 10 o'clock tonight is Inside Number 9 on BBC Two. I've still not watched that either. But again, that's one you can... you can. That one's a little more bingeable just because it's half hours. So if you did want to binge it, you can get yeah. like three, three anthology stories in an hour and a half. But again, that's one where you can just jump in in one go, watch a bit and go, that was really good. Hmm. Can't wait to see what's on the table next week. As hmm. I couldn't with this, because after San Junipero, I was like, where's the tone going to go? Man Against Fire. Uh, Men Against Fire is, I mean, it, it's Call of Duty Zombie Mode, the video game. The TV show. It's okay. a mili- military squad. Soldiers are deployed uh, across slightly more <laughs> deserted areas of America to take out roaches. Mutated humans who are carrying stuff in their blood that essentially makes them dangerous. They need to be wiped out before it can spread or before they can breed. So they've all got augmented reality implants in their heads to make them better killers. And they're all out there like targeting stuff. And it's, it's closed missions. It's like, we know there's some here. We're going to send five of you in as a tactical unit and you go take them out. Um, one soldier after, after killing uh, two roaches on his first go starts to experience glitches with his um, augmented uh, like database with his, with his, with his implants. Mm hmm. And he starts to refer to the roaches by sex instead of referring to them as monsters and creatures. And he's not sure why. And suddenly he's thinking about the whole situation slightly differently. And it's it makes no sense to him as to why suddenly he's he's doubting everything they're doing. Yes. It's, it's a story about following the leader and relying heavily on technology as just a given that, oh, no, this is fine. This is fine for us. Yeah. Honestly, it's fine. Yeah. It's also a massive freaking morality play, and it beats you over the head <laughs> repeatedly. But also, like again, I don't want to say too much about Men Against Fire because it is another one where it's like to absorb the whole is the best way to absorb it. Uh, but I'll say this: if you're purely looking to see someone in live action, like do a Call of Duty in terms of the direction and the the photography, cinematography, and everything, if you want to see like Call of Duty or that kind of thing done in live action and done brilliantly yeah give it a watch mm. because that stuff is done so well mm. and finally hated in the nation the feature length finale um <laughs> i'm gonna read you the synopsis as it is listed on wikipedia just so i'll give you an idea okay, okay. a series of murders is tied to autonomous drone insects mechanical mechanical replacements for colony collapse disorder and social media hashtags Okay. Imagine if an episode of Luther or Law and Order UK or, you know, like, like, um, you, you know what I mean? Like sort of a, an evening, like 9pm post-watershed cop procedural on British television. Hmm. Imagine if that was about a hashtag leading to the deaths of individuals on a daily basis. And it may or may not be connected to the mechanical bees that people have made to replace the bees that are going missing. Okay. Imagine a story featuring a rapper who publicly insults a child who is, adores them and thinks they're their idol on a chat show, so winds up dead the next day because of a hashtag. Or a Katie Hopkins esque controversial journalist ends up dead because of a hashtag. It's really good. And it, it's probably the most simple Black Mirror 
approach ever. Like, it's just a post-Watershed procedural. Mm. But there's, like, a sci-fi element to it. But it's not treated like a, this is amazing! It's a, oh yeah, no, the drones, they, they've been around for like a year. They, they, they just move pollen around like the bees are meant to. Mm. Okay. Um, starring in the main roles is mm. Kelly MacDonald and Faye Marze. Faye Marze is amazing. What will I have seen her in? You will have seen her. I'm just like, give her a click of Rooney here. Because I was like, what do I know from? You're a Throne, you're a Thrones person, aren't you? Game of Thrones. She was the waif a couple of series ago. Yeah. Uh, she was Shona in Doctor Who last Christmas, the one character that everyone went, okay, I kind of want to see that character in a story again. Oh, okay, yeah. The really, yeah. the really goofy lady. Yeah. Um, oh, last Christmas was shit, wasn't it? Yeah, but she <laughs> it was a bit but, right. But she was lovely. It was a bit wild. Uh, she, played, uh, she played Amy in the latest Need for Speed game. So oh, that wow. Narrows anything down. <laughs> Narrows it down! Narrows it down! Wait, in the actual cast or the original cast that all got fired? I'm assuming the cast that, that <laughs> wasn't fired as she's in the published game. Yeah. For oh more on that, go back a few yeah, episodes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, she was in like Glue and Fresh Meat and stuff. Um, she's she's brilliant in it. She's absolutely wonderful. Uh, and in supporting role as someone from the... Uh, oh god, what's it called? Someone from the... Let me double check. The uh, uh, NCA is Benedict Wong. But it's it's... Like a bit of Benedict Post Wong. Doctor Strange recording Benedict Wong, so he's he's shed a bit of the the Netflix slash uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe weight ever so slightly, <laughs> and it's really weird because you're like, wait, that is Benedict Wong. He looks slightly different. It's just because like hair and weight slightly different. And then I remembered in the Peter Serafinowicz show, he used to be really scrawny. He put on all the yeah. weight for who was it? He played the Netflix show. It was a massive freaking show. Is it Marco Polo? Uh, no, it was um, yeah, Marco Polo. Yeah, because he was Kuba Khan. Um, and he put on all that weight and muscle and he just looked fucking like a beast. Yeah. And he just retained it, pretty much. So in this he was, yeah, slightly, in this he was slightly tinier. I was like, wait, what? Um, <laughs> but then I remember the Peter Serafinowicz show. He was scrawny as anything. Because he plays Yoko Ono in a bunch of the sketches. He's fucking hilarious in it. Um, but he's great and he's a nice addition. And just it all works out really well. It's That's feature length. It's like an hour and 25 minutes. That's crazy. Yeah. Which they've done the opposite of this year. USS Callister's a feature length opener. So yeah, it's it's the the Netflix format has given Black Mirror the chance to be more than a fifty minute drama. Yeah, like and I think it's, some of them are an hour, some of them are forty five, some of them are an hour and a half. Yeah, it's like, fair you make enough. it what it needs to be. Yeah, which I think is 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 cool. All in all, I really like it. It's hard to say out of the three series I've watched if it's my favorite because I can't get my head around the fact that we got six episodes of Black Mirror in one go last year, and another six are now available to watch because mm. before that we had three. And then three, and then a special. Like, and it's easier to sort of decide what your favourite series are and that. So it's 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 an interesting one, but I I recommend you give it a try as soon as you can, just because it's bloody wonderful. Um, okay. Yeah, and I'm going to crack on with series four soon. So I'm going to get around to it. If I you am. guys have questions about series four, wait until we give you an indication that it's been watched. Don't start sending them in yet. And as always, yeah. avoid spoilers in questions if you can. Uh, simply because don't spoil it for the listeners or either of us who might not have watched a thing. Or, so. you know, yeah. Now, one thing I don't mind being spoiled. Yeah. Because it sounds like it spoiled everyone who watched it. It's it it's, it's spoiled like spoiled milk. Matthew Erogenous Watson. <laughs> the man who recently turned 603. I did, re- I did recently turn 603. We drank so much Trooper on Saturday. I hope you're aware of that. <laughs> That's... Lucy came home with like a recommends list in her head because your dad was just going, yeah, like this is the best one. I... <laughs> mm, I... <laughs> it was Matt's birthday last week. We had a party on Saturday and it was lovely. <laughs> I didn't have a hangover on Sunday morning. Really? No, I had a hangover on Sunday night. Oh my God, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> That's all right. I took some painkillers before I went to bed and I woke up bright and breezy the next morning. And then it caught up. Oh my god! No, it was okay. It was okay. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I was working some night, so I ended up being fine. But yeah, I was wonderfully groggy on Sunday. It was nice. Yeah. Um. So... Yeah. Well, yeah. Unfortunately, I was quite ill yesterday. Well, I you know, was a bit of flu. Though. Well, aside from drinking, your dad tried to make you ill around Christmas time. Was it on Christmas Day? On Christmas Day of all days. Oh my god! So right. it was. Twas, twas Christmas morn. 2017. It was, it was Christmas morning. And Matt and family were sitting down from tea, their stomachs digesting the food oh, on no, the we table. we hadn't even eaten yet, which is good. Cause... They'd sat down having had some cereal or something, and no. a bit of a selection and a box. And a bit of coffee, and he hadn't started drinking yet. 
Oh, I don't know why I've gone. Um, <laughs> the stockings were hung from his beard with care. We were just flicking through, <laughs> looking for something to watch. And and my dad goes, oh, have you seen Bright? And I'm like, oh, no, dad, don't. Because my dad's got a thing for terrible movies. Not in like an ironic way, in like he just actually <laughs> likes bad things. He has Omega no, Man is a wonderful movie. He has no taste. Oh, no. <laughs> not Omega Man. I am Omega. I am Omega. With Mark DeCascos. Oh, right. So not Omega I'm... Man, the Charlton Heston. No, no. Oh, I am Omega, okay. the, the straight to video. Um, this is sort of the, the I Am Legend cash in starring Mark DeCascos. Um, no, it's fucking terrible. Um, so I'm like, no, don't don't tell me you've watched Bright. You've watched. No, oh, no. We're going to watch Bright, aren't we? So he's like, oh, let's put it on. It's like, no. <laughs> so we put on Bright. Now, just just a bit of context. Your your dad is a lovely man. He's a lovely man, and he has something I wish I had. What's that? He has an enthusiasm superpower. <laughs> where, even if it is terrible, sometimes he's aware that it's terrible. Yes, but he still really, really enjoys it, and will defend yes. it because he enjoys it. And you know what? I I will quite happily enjoy a bad movie. Oh, you will, but I won't yeah. defend it. No. Like I will not say that this that a bad movie is good. Now, to be fair, but I will say that I love it. When I say defend, I don't mean he does the 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 like modern internet version of defending and starts swearing, shouting abuse. He goes, "Oh come on, no, it's good." He doesn't do what some of the men's <laughs> rights associate. The, yeah, that's right. The men's rights associations; those are apparently a thing. Yep. He doesn't do what some of them have oh. done and create <clears> a a forty-five minute re-edit of the Last Jedi, cutting out all the female characters and female empowerment themes and scenes. What's really odd about that is that's, that that means that they've pirated it. That's been done. That means they've pirated it, and they're like, "Look at this thing we've done that is illegally." Fl- that is floating around online, which goes to show how, like, sort of how how clever and, and you know full of initiative these guys yeah. genuinely are. Yeah. That they've done that and gone, "See, we're fixing things." It's like, uh, we're not even getting into your ideology and your fucking screwed up like yeah. objective. You pirated a movie and released a pirate of it online. <laughs> like, that's right. You're idiots. Disney, come yeah. down hard on them, please. We're going to re-edit this movie, so we're going to cut out all the times that Poe is criticised. Disney, him a hero. come down hard on them, and then come on them, because I think the gay panic alone would make them implode. Yeah, do that. Right. Spunk. <laughs> um, speaking of spunk... Uh, <laughs> dried, yes! Dried, crusty, sort of yellowing... Um, man juice. Um, bright... It's a 2017 crime fantasy film directed by David Ayer and written by Max Landis. Possibly, apparently, maybe. Some stuff's come out of Mm. people who've read the screenplay going, yeah, it wasn't this bad. It was definitely rewritten by Ayers, Uh, because that's what he does. But Landis still was like, yes, this is my movie, watch my movie, and did all that thing, and did the thing that he used to say you shouldn't do, which is, as a writer, you put yourself on the front line, Mm. so... It stars Will Smith. Oh dear. It stars Joe Legerton. Oh It dear. stars Joe Legerton's makeup. <laughs> it stars <laughs> Numi Rabass. And it stars Lucy Fry. I don't know either. I'm just reading Is she the pretty with. fry for a white guy? Uh pretty fry for an elf gal? Get out. So <laughs> the thing the the the, the the Thing by John Carpenter. Thing. Did you know no, he would have a movie. He would have been seventy this week. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, going to be really awkward if he actually does die in the time between this episode geez. being recorded and it coming out. Please don't die, John. <laughs> no, please, please don't die. Please make another movie though. You can make another movie if you want. Do do um, do all of that several um, times. He loves video games. Uh, <laughs> um, so Bright is basically set in an alternate. Today, where okay. humans have existed alongside orcs and elves and fairies and all that gubbins for centuries, and two thousand years ago there was there was an uprising with the Dark Lord, and nine armies came together to defeat the Dark Lord, and the orcs were on the Dark Lord's side. So now the orcs are sort of persecuted, <laughs> still, even um, though they weren't necessarily like all bad. They chose the wrong side. Yeah. And now everyone <laughs> hates them and they're an underclass. And the elves are like the sort of beautiful upper class. Um, they're the elite of society. 
Um, and fairies, symbolism, uh, symbolism, they just get symbolism, beaten to death. Symbolism, they symbolism, get, they, symbolism, fairies, symbolism. Fairies get racial beaten. prejudice. Fairies get beaten to death on the main character's lawn by him with a broom and the one-liner: "Fairy lives don't matter today." Oh, I think it's important to set the tone uh, for any project. But it ain't a pleasant tone when that happens in the opening of the movie. You know what? And the production company put together to create this film was called Trigger Warning Trigger Warning Productions. Like, like they're they're basically going, "What you mad, bro? You mad, bro? Ooh, I'm so edgy and cool. And look, look what I see my frame spawn number one. No, it's the coolest, edgiest (laughs) comic ever made. It's not because he's from hell. And he's all burn up and shit. And he has chains and yeah. spikes and a big cape. And this movie's got orcs. That was David Ayer there. Um, yeah. He, 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 yeah. He added fuck Marvel as he left the room. So basically what what, <laughs> what happens is that Will Smith is, is an LAPD. Tattoo. Will Smith is an LAPD. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he's an LAPD officer. And Joel Edgerton is his... Orc partner, <coughs> yes. who is the first orc on the LAPD. <laughs> they don't like each other. No. Joel Edgerton's uh, Nick Jacoby, who's the orc. Nick Jacoby. Yeah, he's he's trying. You know, he's trying to be a good cop, and he's trying to help out um, uh, Daryl Ward, who is Will Smith's character. Uh, but Daryl just can't stand him, and then they end up getting caught up in this whole thing with. Uh, they find an elf with a magic wand. Holy shit. And magic wands in this universe are like... Someone describes it as a nuclear weapon that grants wishes. Which is an incredibly lazy way of saying this thing is very powerful in ways that are defined by whatever the plot needs it to be at any given moment. Like, seriously, what this thing can do and the effects it has on characters is... It changes it's, from moment all to moment. it does is service <clears throat> the scene in question where the writer decides what it does there and then yeah basically um, there, there is no solid tangible this is what it's for even if it, even if it was like oh it's capable of so many things as long as someone knows how to use it yeah that's still vague but you get the idea of oh it can do anything as long as the person controlling it knows what they're doing yeah and basically it's sort of that's, a... I mean that's a rule set no, that's a rule set. As vague as it is, that is a set of rules. It's it's a buddy cop movie where <laughs> they're trying to keep this, um, this <laughs> this magical MacGuffin out of the hands of someone who wants to use it to bring back the Dark Lord and reignite the war. Not the war. The war. The war. The, they want to want to bring the Dark Lord back and thrall over all the races. So uh, reasons ill-defined. Wait and... a minute. Wait a minute. Max Landis, a few years ago, in one of his many online interviewee pitchy things, mm-hmm. pitched a story featuring like Chris Pratt and and actors like that going on this archaeological dig because they've basically found, the film is set up to be like a we found Atlantis story. Yeah. But there's the, these dark shapes in the ocean and in the water, like surrounding these ruins, these statues. They're not quite sure what it is. And basically, by the end of the story, Michael B. Jordan, who's like the the, the help, you know, the other scientist, supporting character, goes insane, like kills Chris Pratt, snatches the artifact that they've been trying to get the whole time, and is like, "My precious," and shoves it on his finger, and reignites Middle Earth. And the film turns out to be a pseudo sequel to Lord of the Rings, claiming that it happened in the past. And when you watch this very passionate, that's, excitable yeah. pitch happen, you go, "That's a fun. That is a fun thing we've just watched. We've watched a man who's possibly a sexual abuser, but we've watched a man who's got a really good imagination and a passion for storytelling come up with a really interesting. Oh shit, you got me! Idea in that moment. D- don't know if it would work in execution as a movie, yeah. but that was a really cool. Well, little, that was um, a really cool eight minute story time. Guess what? Turns out he made it. It doesn't work in execution as a movie. <clears throat> uh, this is basically a movie which says. Um, the modern world is pretty much exactly as it is today, except the Lord of the Rings happened two thousand years ago. So you did it. Like you did it. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And it, but the Alamo still happened. Ugh. Um, and there's still racial tensions, but there's also racial tensions. With, and there's also between orcs and humans an well. incredibly white upper class writer and a white director. Oh yeah. Trying yeah, to tell yeah. a story of yeah. project. They're telling you all about the race. The race. And, the race. 
Yeah. The racism. <coughs> Do you feel the racism? Tonight yeah, it, it is where we racism. are. It's... <sighs> Can you feel the racism in Bright? There's an infuriating <laughs> thing about this movie. In that it does have some good ideas. Mm. And it's the same thing that's infuriating. I mean, casting Numi Rapace as an, like a, a sort of evil. mysteriously evil elfy yeah, character kind of thing. That's some good casting. Yeah. She's a brilliant actor with a fantastic range. You can play really ethereal qualities. Yeah, so getting what? to see her unleash and do something like that would be very cool. But they, you don't. She like, like, she's she's underutilised. She doesn't really do anything. <laughs> casting she Will, just casting Will Smith stoic. as the not charming, disgruntled lead that he used to play off against in movies is a genius idea. I mean, it's a waste of his screen charm. It's a waste of his charm. Him. Yeah, like it's only worth the subversion if they have something to they, they've brought yeah. something new to it because you'd be like oh my god Will Smith's the Tommy Lee Jones of this movie mm. and it works because they've done it this way but no it just sounds like Deadshot my... it sounds like Deadshot it's like let's take one of the most charismatic actors oh, yeah. in Hollywood yeah, yeah. and give him it, th- what I've heard about Bright has actually made me excited for the Disney live action Aladdin just because I'm like okay Will Smith's the genie can we watch him do something fun again? Please? Yeah, because this is not... This I mean, I don't want to watch this movie. I don't want to watch Aladdin the remake. But I want to see Will Smith doing something fun again. This is not fun. <laughs> oh, God, I can tell. It tries to be funny. <laughs> oh. And uh, I really like Joel Edgerton in it. Hmm. Well, I what do I know him really from? Good, he's um, in The Thing uh, prequel. Re- yeah, yeah. Uh, he's an awesome Did you know Joel Edgerton? Carpenter? The producer of the thing, <laughs> prequel. Um, it would have been 70s. It would have been 70s. Um, um, is Joel Edgerton in Suicide Squad? Or am I having a moment? No, you're thinking of Joel Kinnaman. Joel Kinnaman, that's it. Uh, what else have you seen Joel Edgerton? Let me just look quickly. I'll look up his body of work. Joel um, Edgerton, Joel time to read Edgerton, your IMDb. But yeah, he's, he's, he's working his ass off under all these prosthetics. And I think he's a pretty neat character. Um, it comes at night. He's been in Midnight Special. Did you see Midnight Special? No, but that's quite good. Um, he was in The Great Gatsby on Life of Timothy Green, Zero Dark Thirty. Uh, yeah, the thing prequel is in Warrior. Uh, he's in a lot of middling to eh films, basically. Yeah, but he's great. Apart from It Comes at Night, that's one of them things. He's he's in a lot. Which sounds like an amazing porno. Oh, he's Owen Lars in Revenge of the Sith. His young uncle Owen oh, in Revenge of the shit. Sith. Oh, shit, yeah. Oh. Who at any point could be going, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't want this baby. Yeah. Leave us alone. And yet. <laughs> um, One day I'll be lay outside this doorway, a smoking corpse. A smoking skeleton. Crispy bodies by the door. Uh, yeah, so. A needle pulling thread. Bright just doesn't work on a number of levels because it's not interesting. And none of the characters are really likable, despite Joel Edgerton's best efforts to be likable. Hmm. Um, <laughs> the action scenes are kind of dull. The palette's kind of dull. Things just happen. It's washed out no greys and browns. Yeah. And it's... Everything you're describing sounds like Suicide Squad. Yeah. Is, is David Ayer's just going to make that movie now from, from now on? Forever. Yeah. And everything's horrible and everything's like... Oh, okay, we're going to go to these people for help. Oh, these people have turned against us. And okay, we're going to go to these people to help. And all these people have turned against us. And we're going to go to these people to help. And now, on this person's on our side, but now evil people have come and killed him. And it's just, oh, come on. And the name of the film comes from, like, people who are magically adept or have potential to be magical uh, beings are called brights. Okay. And the elf girl that they rescue with the wand has defected from this, like, society who wants to bring back the Dark Lord and she's a bright so she can use the wand. Okay. Um, and it's... They sort of make out that Will Smith's character is a bright. Of course um, they do because but... they can't have him be the lead and not be like, he's the chosen one. Yeah, but he's, then he isn't. So... Oh. They can't just they can't just go back to the like the big trouble in Little China like Evil Dead pre... Well, maybe not Evil Dead because it turns out there's a chosen one narrative there as well but like... A big trouble, big trouble in Little China narrative of just, oh yeah, this guy, this guy's just here. Yeah. Like, this guy's just here and he's going to fucking join in and kick some ass. He has right. no, he is way 
over his, this is all way over his head. He has no idea what he's doing, but he's going to help out. Yeah. They can't do that anymore. It's got to be, maybe you have something special too. It's like, oh, for God's sake. Yeah, it's one of those, like, it's... He has... Like, he's clear. Like, he's the best marksman on the squad. They make a thing of him being the best on the squad. And there's one moment where he's like... He, like, turns around and guns down four people mm. in one move. Like, dead shot. Mm. So then it's like, oh, yeah, no. He, and then they keep saying he's blessed. And it turns out that he is a bright, but then, and then they yeah. don't really do anything with it. But then also, he. It's hinted that he's sort of destined to face down the Dark Lord. Oh, God. Sequel bait? Yeah. Does the movie blatantly sequel bait? Uh, <laughs> they are making a sequel. I think it ties it up neatly, although they are talking about, like, oh, well, they're still going to bring the Dark Lord back. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like, they do all this thing, oh, he's, he's great, he's great, he's great, and, oh, he's a bright because he grabs the wand at the... Spoilers. Because he grabs the wand at the end and kills the bad guy with it. So, this yeah. is a world with potential for storytelling. Yeah, like, there's so many... There's some really good ideas in this movie, but it's just a mess, and it's not fun to watch. Fuck a sequel... Like, it's just Turn boring. it into a Netflix show. Yeah, I'd watch that. Have the movie be the extended pilot that sets it up, but then have a show. But it's With different just... characters, different scripts, different directors, just so it can be like, this week, this is our character. This is the story we're going to tell. Yeah. It's this just... week, we're going to do this. We're going to meet this person. Like, I really want to rip into it for being, like, awful, awful. But the sad thing is, it's just boring. Which is the worst a thing can be. Yeah. I mean, there's a... This thing's 27... Boring's worse than bad. This thing's 27% on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. And that's not necessarily because it's, like, an inept film. Like, it's got a structure. It's a repetitive structure. Mm. It managed to be repetitive within a movie length. Mm. It managed to repeat itself by it constantly being <laughs> a series of... Well, like, I understand that conflict and obstacles are, you know, the, the building blocks of drama. Yeah. But this thing is just literally a series of, okay, they're going to go for these people for help, and all these people have turned against them. Or they're going to go to this person for help, oh no, oh, now the people have against. killed him. Yeah. And now the bad people are chasing them, so they go to these people for help, and they hide out here, but then they get captured by these other people, and then these guys want to kill them, and then all the bad guys are here again. And then... I mean, 27% is still, like, two, two and a half stars. So... No, hang on, that's not. What the fuck am I talking about? It's it's one star. Like its writer. It's one star! <laughs> like its writer, there are gems of ideas in this movie. Like, genuinely great ideas and concepts. But they're just buried under so much unpleasant shit that you got to ask yourself, is it worth it? My God. Even go there. Just, that would be... Yeah, what you're saying is the perfect analogy of what this film is 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 Max Landis. Yeah, is what you're basically saying. Yeah, this is Max Landis put onto celluloid. Wow. And he said he described it as his Star Wars. Yeah. Like, and I think now, now no, to reiterate, during his writing, he said this. Well, here's the thing, right? Not, not like how many chances, but... even before this whole thing came out about him being a creep and a sexual abuser, in which case, just straight up fuck that guy anyway. Hmm. But even before all this stuff came out, how many chances have we given Max Landis to write a great movie since Chronicle? Yeah, to actually make a finished product. It's all yeah. well and good to talk about it, and it can be very entertaining to listen to him. And like I said, you can see the passion. Hmm. You can see the good ideas when he talks about like telling stories and script structure. But you're right, in execution... American Ultra's got something about it. Chronicle's pretty great. Uh, when it comes to on paper, I've not read his, his, his own, published her own stuff, but like American Alien was good. This is three things in a sea of about 50 things now. Yeah. When it comes Dirk, to like... Dirk Gently's not bad, but I, I, would just, I would say that's more to the tone of the series his, rather than the scripts. When it comes to his bread and butter, his trade... As a screenwriter. Yes. That, yeah, there we are. Forgetting show and stuff he, here. What has he yeah. actually done... Mm. Since Chronicle, that's been good. The Red Letter Media Review. <laughs> yeah. And that's overshadowed by the fact that do we see a fucking his, creep. Do we see his ball sack, Rich Evans? Do we see his ball sack? Oh, God. Did we see Max Landis' ball sack? Probably, even though we didn't by want to. By the sound to. of it, by the sound of it. Yeah. Possibly a few right. people have. Okay, so... Alleged! Alleged! Shall we do, alleged. Shall we do something? Likely. Shall we do something? What should we do? 
can we say unless that he's ex- unless he's exonerated of these um, sexual abuse accusations, mm-hmm. should we just try and avoid talking about Max Landis ever again? I think that's pretty straightforward. There some we people, go. Some people might listen to this and go, "You can't just do that because it's not been proven." Is that it's like, yeah, that's fine. Like if if he comes out and says, "Yeah, I deny this," or at least apologizes like a fucking well, man. he can deny whatever he wants, but yeah, um, yeah. if he apologizes like a man or proves that it never happened in the first place, cool, we'll talk about him again, but. At this point... Until then, fuck that guy. Yeah. I'm sick of defending the accused. Mm. It's time to stand up for the accusers. Now. Right! Enough of the horrible, creepy world of media and storytelling and foreboding nonsense within fiction. Now It's time to look at something that's definitely (laughs) real. This is definitely real. And not a story being told inventively through use of new media. This is definitely real. Back in September of last year, we released an episode called You've Seen Dear David, Haven't You? Where we discussed oh, Adam Ellis, yes. who's an illustrator and a, 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 an artiste, uh, his Twitter adventures with a young spook called Dear David. Now, to give you a brief recap, we went that's up to... spunky young spook. That spunky young spook. That spooky young spunk. Wait, what? What? We, we probably shouldn't curse him, um, lest he... Up, yeah. Fuck you, um, dear David. Oh god. Oh god, Matt, no. I hate you bees, I hate you bees, I hate you bees! I, I bought you a green chair and everything for your oh, room. Oh no! So, dear David, uh, Adam Ellis was having these dreams of a small child with a sort of pale complexion, a dent in the side of his head, sitting on a chair in his bedroom. By the power invested in me by the Sunday Times, I declare him guilty! Of pedophilia. No, it was dreams. Oh. It was dreams. And he wasn't he wasn't touching his ghost child. The ghost child was trying to touch him. Ah! Yes. <laughs> By the power invested in me from a reader's pole. <laughs> <laughs> By the power invested in me from the Richard and Judy book club sticker. I declare you. Um... Dear David appeared at the end of his end of his room, or sat on this green chair in his dreams, and every time he dreamt about him, <laughs> Dear David would get up from the chair and start to walk closer to the bed. Eventually, he had a dream about a young girl who said to him, You've seen Dear David, haven't you? Dear, dear David. You. Now, he, one thing led to another, and he believes that Dear David may or may not be this child who uh, died in a supermarket with some stuff like fell on his head and and bludgeoned him. He's not sure if that's true, but it seems to be the only connecting thing. There was a warehouse near his place that used to repair shopping carts near his apartment, which closed down all of a sudden, and one day the shutters were just wide open, and sitting in there was just a green chair, akin to the one in his room. Um, Adam Ellis has several times heard things around his flat. His cats have sat at the door, staring at the door for hours on end after living there for years and never behaving this way. He used to live... He's in a house that's two flats, one on the ground floor, one on the upper floor. He used to live in the downstairs one. He moved to the upstairs one because it's a bit bigger when the opportunity arose. And ever since he moved there, he started having these dreams. I love it when it's a bit bigger. Ooh, baby. Now, the last we looked in on this, there was video footage of something falling off a shelf in his house. Uh, there was video footage of a chair moving. Mm. There was a shadow that seemingly looked like a small figure in the kitchen on one of the stills. And his cats had been wailing um, uncontrollably at the doorway from time to time. Add to that uh, a phone call incident, which we're about to get onto. Um, okay. Oh, no, we've done the phone call. The phone call happened. Yeah, the phone call, uh, he heard... I'll recap the phone call, because that's the thing that freaked me out the most up to the point where we were last time, yeah? But the phone call was a missed call from a number he didn't recognise. No caller ID, no caller ID. My entire call history of the past week looks like this. You'll notice I answered once yesterday. Since it's been happening for days on end, I thought it might be an automated telemarketer. Usually if it's automated, if you answer once, they quit calling, so I picked up. Instead, what I heard on the other end was a peculiar electrical static, very similar to the static my sleep app picks up at night. I didn't say anything, I just listened, waited for some automated message to begin. After about a minute, the static stopped. I kept listening. I heard what I thought was breathing, but it was too faint, I couldn't be sure. Then, just as I was about to hang up, a very small voice whispered, Hello. Something about the way they said hello freaked me out. It wasn't a question or a greeting, just hello. A flat statement. So quiet I could barely hear it. I panicked and hung up, 
<clears throat> I didn't know what else to do. I closed all the curtains in my apartment and turned on every single light. So that was the thing that freaked me out the most out of all the stories so far. Yes. We checked out... I've, I've been keeping it abreast of it for a while, but I've been saving it for a day when we uh, we had a bit of a slow news week to be like, Matt, here's the shit that's been going down. We're down okay. Okay. So, dear David, ladies and gentlemen, just to clarify for the faint of heart listening to us, no way to know if this is real. Probably isn't real. I'm a skeptic myself, but I'm also open to things. I think it's kind of a cool idea. I think what's going on it's in here... It's definitely think... real, and it's definitely not a story being told via social media well, in an attempt to do new ways of storytelling. Well, that's the thing. It's... Hang on, we managed to repeat ourselves once in the same podcast. I know, right? We're bright! Uh, so... <laughs> it's, just, it's basically Basically, what... it's, it's an artist doing something really fucking creative. It's what people did in the in the earlier days of the internet with Ted's Caving Page and Eric Casarier's Dying yes. in the House. Oh my god, Ted's uh, Caving Page, yes. Yes. Um, it's and and, 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 and K- Katie is typing before those, app, typing, before those yeah. apps appeared and have mm. turned it into a thing now where it's like soap opera and stuff like that. Do you remember the Dianea house? It was so good. Yeah, I'm fucked. And er- oh, Eric Seri is a screenwriter now. Mm. Well, yeah. So I don't, I don't know if they're ever getting a Dianea house. Practice makes program. perfect. So, yeah. The Marble Hornets guys should be given something like that. I mean, they narratively they got out of control, but they, they were good at setting up an idea and then they got to make a Marble Hornets movie that I think only did festivals and now Slenderman's coming out, which has nothing to do with their project, but I believe is by the same studio. So pretty... they got screwed and that movie looks shite. It looks pretty generic, yeah. Mm. But anyway, tell me more about Dear David, the definitely real adventures of Dear David. <laughs> Dear David! <laughs> if anyone wants to follow along out of curiosity and look at the whole story, you can go to storify.com slash moby underscore dickhead slash dear dash David. Um, I'll retweet it from our account as well when this episode goes out in case anyone wants to check it out. But this is where Adam Ellis is collecting all of his tweets. Tuesday, 5th of September. It's happening again. I've been leaving the nanny cam on 24-7. It records every time there's movement or sound, as you know. I was going over the feed from this weekend and noticed some weird stuff. During the night on Saturday... That's... Saturday? Saturday! Saturday? While I slept, it recorded the cats in the living room. It seemed pretty unremarkable at first, but then after a few moments, Maxwell freaks out and jumps over something invisible. I don't think it was a bug or anything. Maxwell doesn't react like that with bugs, he just eats them. Something spooked him. What's more, we almost never get bugs. I've seen maybe three in all the years I've lived here. Anyway, next night, the camera recorded a couple more strange videos. Specifically, it recorded Maxwell doing this on and off for hours. What's he doing? Maxwell is sat on his hind legs with his body stretched upwards. Oh, cats don't do that. I don't, I've never seen either of my two cats do that. Luna did it once for about ten seconds. I think she was just trying to like stretch and went a weird way about it. Mm. But yeah, it's a dog thing to do, not a cat thing. <clears throat> He'd sit up on his hind legs and peer around the room as if looking for something. This is odd behaviour for him and I can't come up with an explanation, especially because of the next video. Here's the final video the camera recorded that night. So there's a little clip. There we go. The cat is the cat is mooching around. And he's seen something. Oh. He sits yeah, so well, you watch him sit up, that's kind yeah. of odd. He's got his paws up. And he's watching something move around. Almost like he's about to swipe at something. Yeah. And, and he, he does. does. And he does. <laughs> Swipes in the air. So it's back down, keeps looking for something. Hmm. So that could be could be a fly, could be a bug, it's certainly that kind of behaviour. But, 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 but the hind leg thing is a bit weird. Yeah. I mean cats will do that if they're stretching for something. Uh, speaking of stretching for something, I suppose there's a chance it was a fly, but I honestly never get flies, so that seems unlikely. Yeah, you lucky bastard. <clears throat> I just can't shake the feeling something's <clears throat> made its way into the apartment. Me! It's odd behaviour from Maxwell in any event. Things feel off this week, I can't explain it. Can't explain. Dun, 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 dun. September 16th. I've been having so many nightmares lately. There's Taxi's wait- a fucker, innit? <laughs> Of September 16th. If he was having nightmares that early, then Jesus Christ. Some people he's get got... it all the way early, I'm just saying. I don't put nightmares about it. You can file point. it from the 6th of April. That's true. You probably uh, fucking should. Yeah, I know. Anyway, yeah. nightmares. There's way more, they're way more intense than my usual dreams too. I don't know if it's because I'm stressed or if it's something else. This afternoon I took a nap and had a dream I haven't been able to shake. In the dream, I was laying in bed and rolled over to face the other direction. On the pillow next to me was a severed head with a bloody spine attached, snaking down the bed. The head was staring right at me, somehow still alive. It had this huge smile plastered on its face. I swear she looked more attractive when I was drunk. Bigger goggles. Horrified, I screamed, what happened to you? The head smiled even bigger. It feels great, the head groaned. Uh... After that, I woke up. 
It was dark outside by then, everything was quiet. Other dreams have been just as strange. Things like dark figures star staring in my windows, even though I live on the second floor. Stiltman! <laughs> Hello, it's the amazing Stiltman! <laughs> Stuff that makes... It wasn't his replacement Lady Stiltman. There was a thing in Daredevil for a while of having lady versions of it. Was a lady but, but I'm sure the Stiltman was called Lady Stiltman. Oh, yeah. Because sure. she basically just bought the tech and was like, well, the Stiltman name is a thing, so yeah. I'm just going to keep it. But lady I'll be Lady Stiltman. Stiltman. Yeah, because yeah, um, she appears in a, a Superior Spider-Man Deadpool um, storyline and Deadpool rips the piss out of the name. Thank God for Stiltman. <clears throat> Thank God for Stiltman. Um, Stuff that makes no sense in relation to what I've been experiencing in real life. After that dream about the head, I've been feeling uneasy all night. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I decided to go for a walk for no other reason to get out of my apartment. I went to a bodega a few blocks away to get a snack. On the way, I had to pass the warehouse that was boarded up a few weeks ago. It's actually on the way to everything. I pass it twice a day just to get to the subway. I hurried past it since it freaks me out now. This is the one where he peered in and saw the chair. At the bodega, I got some Doritos and a seltzer and made my way back home. When I passed the warehouse a second time, I heard a dull thunk from the other side of the shutters. I froze in place, but there was no other sound after that. I probably should have just continued on, but curiosity got the better of me. Oh, that bastard. <laughs> Lovely man. I always bump into him on the way to the bodega to buy Doritos. <laughs> there was a grated window next to the doors about a foot above my head, too high to see into. So I thought to myself, OK, I'm going to hold my phone up to the window, take one photo and then run for my life. <clears throat> I made sure my flash was on, positioned my camera lens through one of the grates, and snapped a photo. I almost thought I saw movement when the flash went off, but I couldn't be certain. The light bounced off the grates and was pretty blinding. I couldn't even look at the photo. I just ran all the way home. I was too jumpy to look at it for a while. I just ate my Doritos nervously. Best way to eat them. When I finally did look at the photo, here's what I saw. It seemed to be a different part of the warehouse, maybe an office. Right. See that? Ooh. So we've got just like a bunch of stuff, looks like a chest of drawers and some other chest of drawers, yeah? Ooh. Stuff piled up. <laughs> There's a bunch of old insulation and what looked like a filing cabinet and a ripped up leather desk chair. Then I noticed something else in the upper right corner, something that looked like a face. Like a face. The more I stared at it, the more I started to look like it started to look like a nondescript blur. Now I can't even be sure what I'm seeing. Maybe I'm too deep into this and my brain wants to see David when he's not there. But I there is the blur he's talking about. And as you can see, turn up the brightness. Yeah. Eyes, eyes, nose, mouth, big old dent in the head, baby shaped head. Very similar to the other images that he's described and drawn. <clears throat> I messed with the photo on my phone a bit. Tell me it doesn't look like him. Ugh. We skip ahead a week to 22nd of September, the year of our Lord, 2017. The past few days have been fairly quiet. I haven't been spending much time at home. I leave for Japan in a couple of hours. This is, yeah, this is near to where we left him. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to avoid anything weird before my trip. I still feel like this all might stop if I just leave for a couple of weeks. Whatever happens, I want to thank everyone for their kind thoughts and concerns. This whole ordeal has been stressful and it means a lot. It makes me feel like I'm not going through this alone. See you in a couple of weeks. Yay! So a week later, I bought a vo uh, votive tablet at the shrine I'm at in Japan. Please, oh. please protect my cats while I'm away from home. Yeah. Another week later, 3rd of October. It's my last full day in Japan. <clears throat> the past couple of weeks have been pretty peaceful. I have people taking care of the cats, and they say they've been doing fine. This morning I went for a long walk around Sapporo. I never really plan my vacations. I like to wander a lot and see what I find. Wander over yonder. I came across this statue in the park. I couldn't find out any real information about it online, but it was weird and pretty. And it's a big sort of column covered in what looks like people, like, you know, yeah. fat, like a mother. It's like a central mother figure. Lots of people, children yeah. clambering all over it. I was taking pictures of it from different angles since it's cylindrical. I moved around to one side and almost dropped my phone at what I saw. It's a dick! It felt too similar to be a coincidence. I felt dizzy staring up at it. This kid... With a dented head. And that's there. It is in the arms of one of the mother figures yeah. around the around the cylindrical statue. Is a baby who's staring out. Unlike a lot of the others, he has full features. He has eyes and nose and a mouth, and he clearly has a head that is dented to one side. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe this is nothing. It doesn't feel like nothing. Anyway, I have to pack for my flight home in the morning. It'll be good to see the cats again, at least. October fifth, two days later. Made it home safely. The cats are fine, if a little more talkative than usual. He's posted a selfie with Aww, him and his cat. That's a good cat. That's a beautiful cat. 
<clears throat> a beautiful, possibly possessed cat. So, another week or so passes. Weird things have been happening with the electricity in my apartment. First two bulbs have burned out in the hallway in less than a week. At this point, I've just left it alone rather than get a ladder again. But the strangest thing has to do with the backlight on my TV. It's an LED strip that plugs into the TV via USB. TV has to be on in order for the backlight to be on, but last night the backlight was flickering on and off by itself. I noticed it sometime before dawn when I woke up and went to the kitchen to get some water. I'd barely gotten back to the room again when I saw a faint light come on in the living room. After a few seconds it went dark. I went back to the living room, <coughs> stood there watching the backlight go on and off for at least a few minutes. Eventually it stopped and now the backlight doesn't work at all. It's only a couple of months old so it shouldn't be dead already. Anyway, I couldn't get back to sleep so I went to the diner near my apartment. It was the only thing open at 4am. Yeah. I had eggs over easy with ham. It was too much ham, but the eggs were pretty good. That old potato, that potato hash looks pretty good as well. It does, doesn't it? When I got back home, the sun was starting to come up, so I figured I might as well shower and go to work early. I showered and brushed my teeth, then headed into the bedroom to get dressed. As I passed the front door, I thought I heard a faint scratching sound from the other side. It was so soft, I wasn't sure it really happened. You stopped wanking under the table. Please. Sorry, sorry. I went over to the door. But it was I was too scared to look through the peephole. I couldn't bring myself to actually put my face that close um, to the sound. Because remember last time, one of the earliest photos he posted was through the peephole when he thought he heard something. Yeah. And one of the pictures, it looks like there is a shape in the end of the hallway. So I opted to take a photo Isn't through the peephole instead. The I shape at the end the of the hallway. The shape at the end of the hallway as seen through an iPhone 7. <laughs> By HP I Lovecraft. Um, since there's a skylight, just outside my door, the hall was awash in faint yellow green light. I snapped a couple of photos. At first, the pictures don't seem like anything. Just blurry nothingness. There you go. That's one with blurry nothingness. Oi, oi, oi. But as I analysed it, I started noticing things. Part of a face, an ear, an eye staring right back at me. I think maybe it's time to get someone else involved. It's obvious this isn't going to stop until I do something. I'm not sure what it is yet. I'll let you all know when I figure it out. Yeah? So it's, I mean, you can see the eye in the middle is the center of the viewfinder. Some of them have like an extra bit of magnifying lens in the middle. Yeah. Um, but that's definitely, that could be seen as someone peering through. And that, to peer through your keyhole. Yeah, someone having to peer through from the other side. So, you know, again, nice eerie picture. I'm going to peep you. <clears throat> Sorry for the radio silence the past couple of weeks, he says, after having only been away for a week. First, I had a friend come over to do some cleansing stuff. She did the whole apartment in the hallway. A lot of self-proclaimed professional mediums have reached out, plus a dozen ghost hunter TV shows. I've nice. declined them all because I don't really want strangers in my house sensationalising what's going on. No, I'm just going to put it all over Twitter. Because it's a storytelling method. So, uh, instead, <laughs> so instead, I had a friend come over and cleanse the place. And for about a week or so, it seemed like it worked. Things appeared to go back to normal. The cats weren't gathering at the door anymore. I stopped having the dreams. It was starting to seem like it was over. But it's coming up to Halloween. Then, one morning, I was walking to work and past the shuttered warehouse, as usual. This time, all the metal doors were wide open, sunlight pouring in. The warehouse was still mostly empty except for one thing. There was a hearse parked near the back wall. Of course there was. <clears throat> and here's the photo. And to be fair, like staged, however... However he's doing this, some of this stuff is like, yeah, you'll have to pull some strings to get these photos yeah. done. But, okay. <laughs> the warehouse has been closed for over two months. So I have no idea why it was open that day, as nobody was around. It was weird, but I tried not to think about it. It's not all that strange to see a hearse, I guess. Like, they have to park somewhere. True. I tried to put it out of my mind, and the next several days were uneventful. But something else happened last night. It was around 11 or so, and I was watching TV on the couch. I went into the dining room to get a drink from the fridge and noticed both cats sitting by the far window, staring up at it. The window looks out onto the roof of the business next door. I glanced out of the window but didn't see anything. What is the business next door? Uh, the small, shrunken, dented head child business. Oh. I figured that maybe there was a mouse in the wall or something, so I shrugged grabbed a beer from the fridge. <clears throat> As I went to the kitchen to get the bottle opener, I noticed something. There's a window in the kitchen, which looks out onto the same roof. And someone was standing on the roof, staring at me. Yeah, I've seen signs too. I immediately ducked down. I reached <laughs> up and flicked... Just get some water. I reached up and flicked <laughs> off the light switch. I peered over the windowsill, but still couldn't see much. My phone was in my pocket, so I grabbed it and took a photo. It was blurry and dark, but I swear I saw someone out there. So here's the photo where he thinks he can see someone on the roof. I 
think that's where he's referring to. No, it can't be, because there's the roof. Okay, no. It's there. There. Can you see that? Okay. There appears to be some solid thing there on the roof. Oh, yeah. I tried to take a better photo, but the figure disappeared. But look, there's a shadow kind of thing, but that's on his window ledge, I believe. Shadow of the moon. Yeah. I closed all the blinds and made sure the door was locked and then drank like five more beers till I was too drunk to be scared. That's a good tactic. I like that. But now I feel like I'm back at square one. I'm sure it was him. He's not going away. I don't know what to do. Nearly two weeks later. Oh, it's dear David. It's been about four months since the first time I dreamt of David. I dream of David. This... He used to be able to do that cute, cute nose wiggle, but then he got his head caved in. No, he can't do anything. He met someone who was a bigger fan of Bewitched than, than I Dream of Genie. <laughs> they just beat him to death. <laughs> this might be long, but stick with me. Last night, I dreamt about him again. It was almost exactly the same as the first time I saw him. In the dream, I saw him in a chair again. I don't have that green chair in my room anymore. This time, it was a recliner I've had for years. He was staring at me just like the first time. Again, I felt paralysed and could barely move, but this time, something was different. I still felt mostly immobile, but I could squirm just a bit. I felt more alert. I could move my hands somewhat. David glared at me, and I dreaded what I knew was coming. He was going to get out of the chair and come towards me like before. I had to do something. I keep my phone next to me on the bed, and I somehow managed to get a hold of it. I thought, if David's going to kill me, maybe I can at least get evidence on my phone. I started snapping pictures in the dark. Sure enough, he crawled down off the chair and began shuffling towards me. He moved slowly, like it was a struggle for him. I felt terrified, but I kept taking photos. David limped closer toward me, never taking his eyes off me, and soon I was face to face with him. He started muttering something, too quiet for me to understand. I watched as his eyes rolled back in his head until they were all white. I tried to writhe away from him, but I could barely move. I stared in horror as he began crawling up onto my bed, still murmuring something. And that's when I woke up. Same as before, broad daylight, no trace of David anywhere. It's almost routine now, but it was a dream after all. So I got up, I went to work, and after a while, the stress of the dream melted away. I wasn't even going to write about this, <clears throat> since it wouldn't really be new information, but tonight, I noticed something that petrified me. I went into my phone to find a picture from a couple of days ago, and saw dozens of pitch-black photos of my camera roll, all taken last night. It's better to just show you. Turn up the brightness, because they're pretty dark. Brightness engaged! Ow, my eyes! Here we go. Ah! That's the first one. In the photo, gentle listener, there is clearly a small, toddler-shaped figure sat on a couch at the end of the bed. That actually scared me. Yep, with a big old blurry bit where the rest of his head should be in one side. There's the next picture. It's now stood on the floor. Nah, bro. There's the next picture of it walking at the end of the bed. This is the one that made my heart drop. Now, ghost story or nay, it's all about how it's told. You are tensed right now. No, like You are freaking mate. out. At that that photo is the one that seems to have got you the most. Oh, He's mate. looking over. It's horrible, isn't it? Isn't it horrible? It is horrible. Oh, my God. Usually, I can come up with some excuse for what's happening, but I have no logical explanation for this. So now I'm sitting here on my couch, freaking out. I certainly won't be able to sleep. I just felt like I needed to get this out. Ah, uh, mate. A couple of weeks later. For everyone asking, yes, I'm alive. I've been on the quiet side because there's something I'm trying to investigate and I'm not sure how yet. I'd rather not tweet unless I have something substantial to share. <coughs> I also sort of It's also sort of hard to explain the logistics of what I'm trying to find out, but I'll do my best. Basically, there's a part of my apartment I'm now just learning about. At least, that's what I think. To refresh your memory, I live in a duplex. I used to live on the first floor, and now I live on the second. It's a long, boxy building that looks like this. So imagine everybody a rectangle. That rectangle's cut in half through the middle. Yeah. To create an old apartment on the lower floor, and a new apartment on the upper floor. There's a roof that he doesn't have access to. There's a business next door, a building very close, and that's the roof where he thought he saw David. Yeah. So it's like a big rectangle with a little square next 
The other week, I was tweeting the most recent update from the living room couch. About 30 seconds after I sent that last tweet, I heard a thump above my head, as if someone had uh, dropped something on the floor, which is impossible, since I'm in the top apartment. There's also no way of accessing the roof. There aren't any ladders on the outside of the building. The only way you'd get on the roof is through the skylight in the hallway, and there are no trees in the immediate vicinity either. It definitely wasn't pipes either. No, because he's from Ghostwatch. Oh, I was just going to make that fucking joke, you it, bastard. It was distinctly the sound of, someone, of something falling to the floor. My building is old and makes lots of old noises, but it was a new sound and it startled me. So I'm thinking, is there a secret crawl space in my home? I look over the apartment, I can't figure it out, so I go into the hallway, and that's when something dawns on me. There's no real way to ease into this, so I'll just say it. There's a mysterious hatch in my hallway. I've always known about it, but I just assumed it opened directly to the roof. There it is, it sort of looks like a loft access that you'd get over here. It's really high above the stairs, so I always figured it was impossible to access without some sort of fancy professional ladder. I took this video so you could see how high up it is. So, there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. like way above the stairs, like not easy to access. But you need a specialist ladder to get to that, or at least a big ladder and a couple of people holding it to make sure you can get into it. Or a very tall man. Ah, the Tallman. The Tallman. The that new movie that's coming out. The Tallman. Ah, the Tallman from my movie. The, the Tallman. Tallman. I see that hatch every morning when I leave for work and think nothing of it, but this time something dawned on me. I can't it can't lead to the roof because it's actually below the roof. I'm about to spring some simple mat on you all, so I apologize in advance. It's a mat, it's a mat lesson. Oh. Mat with a silent H. Well let me teach it then. Three feet of empty space. Can he account for it? He cannot account for it. No. He says, First, the skylight is flat with the roof. I checked Google Earth to make sure. The hatch is about three feet below the skylight, meaning there's about three feet of empty space between the two openings. So, here in the UK, we look at that and assume probably just a, an original loft or storage space. Maybe there was a floor there where the stairs are now. Mm. Or maybe it is just a, oh, you know, we, we, we'll you know put insulation in here and it's storage for stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Maybe the hatch leads to a short ladder going to the roof. Maybe even if that's the case, the hatch is level with all the ceilings of my apartment. That means there's three feet of empty space over the apartment. And he's updated his drawing to account for the empty space on top. Empty space! I was ready to explain this away for a few reasons. <clears throat> One! It might just be some sort of insulated space that all residential buildings have. I'm not an architect. What do I know? It didn't seem relevant enough at the time. So I decided I wasn't going to mention it here. Oh, dear. But over the past week and a half, I've been hearing more things above me. A few days after the first sound, I heard a similar thump while I was in the kitchen. Then last night, I heard something small clink to the floor and roll about six feet before stopping. Something is going on up there. Maybe it's a raccoon, but maybe it's not. I also can't get over the fact that the hatch is in such a weird, inaccessible place over the stairs. I need to investigate. I'm just not sure how right now. That's dear David trying to get in touch. I guess I'll try to buy a long pole off Amazon to see if the hatch even moves. <laughs> I might have to buy a construction ladder. At any rate, that's why I've been missing action for a minute. I'll keep you posted when I figure out how to get up here. Heavy? Okay. okay. Bought okay. a pole in the heavy breeze. Oh, is it? In the breeze, heavy duty, telescoping pole, 16 feet. $38.99? <laughs> yep. He's either going to shell out for a ladder or call his landlord to investigate. Okay, so skip ahead a um, couple days. Oh, about a week. Lots happened in the last week, but I was away for Thanksgiving, so I'm now just able to write it all down. In. <clears throat> the noises from the ceiling haven't let up, but the pole I ordered didn't arrive before I had to leave for the holiday, so I didn't actually get it until late Friday night. I planned to investigate the next morning, so I went to bed. I'd barely fallen asleep when I woke up to an incredibly loud crash above me. It sounded like someone had dropped a bowling ball. I bolted upright in bed and immediately felt strange. There was a weird energy all around me. I can't explain it. Just a wet dream, mate. That's what you are Can't boys. explain this patch on my pants. After about a minute, I heard another crash. I briefly thought about grabbing my shoes and booking it, but that would have meant passing under the hatch, and that seemed like a bad idea. So instead, I just listened and waited, though I'm not sure what for. The crash happened again. And then, probably 15 times in a row, followed by a long silence. Then I heard a smaller creaking sound from in the hallway. In my mind, I registered it as a footstep, but it really could have been anything. I stayed still, but there were no more sounds after that. I lay back down, 
Still tense and nervous, but I must have fallen asleep at some point because I woke up the next morning and everything seemed normal again. I got dressed and left to go get a bagel, same as every Saturday. A bagel! As I made the way down the stairs, something crunched under my feet. I looked down and noticed a pile of debris on the stairs directly under the hatch. And there's a photo. It's a bunch of dirt, the kind of stuff you get if you shuck open a loft hatch that hadn't been accessed for about five or six years. Yeah. It looked like dirt, but I couldn't tell for certain. It could have been old plaster or something. I glanced up at the hatch and noticed something else peculiar. The edge of something was caught in it, barely poking out. It's hard to see because it's so far up, but I took a photo. Do you see it there? Mm -hmm. So let's summon, summon. <clears throat> at that point, bagels were the last thing on my mind. Well, now we know it's a story. I went back upstairs and grabbed the pole. <laughs> I set my camera on the coat wardrobe at the top of the stairs and hit record just to make sure it would be caught on video if a demon burst out of the hatch. Here's the video! Are you ready? So he's going down the stairs a bit. He's got his massive pole and the thing he bought off Amazon. Hey. He's pushing it upwards. Taking his time because that's how you tell a ghost story with suspense. And poke the hatch. The hatch opens. Fuck me. Yep. What was that? Pokes it open and something small falls from the hatch. So, <clears throat> I jumped out of the way and practically fell down the stairs trying to dodge whatever it was that fell. At first I thought it was a dead squirrel, which would honestly explain a lot. It hit the steps and bounced down to the first floor. I went upstairs to get my phone and collapsed the pole since it's so long and unwieldy, then went back downstairs to investigate the object. At first, I wasn't sure what it was. It was a dingy, faded black. Picked it up and realised it was a small leather shoe. Now there it is in his hand. You can see the size of that shoe. That is a small You can see the age of that leather shoe. shoe. I hustled back upstairs and texted my landlord. I told him I thought there was something in the crawl space and asked if he could investigate. He said he'd come by later with a ladder. And ch, -ch, -ch, -ch check it out. A few hours later, my landlord was on a ladder, shining a flashlight into the crawl space. I stared up at him, half expecting something to grab him and yank him into the darkness. He angled his flashlight all around and finally saying, There's nothing up here. But then he was like, Oh, wait. I watched as he reached up into the emptiness with his free arm, and when he pulled it back, he had something small and round in his hand. He climbed down the ladder and handed it to me. Again, wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. It was smooth and shiny, and at first I thought it was an old piece of candy, but it was cold and too heavy. After a second, I realised it was a marble. It was so worn that I hadn't registered as a marble at first. Its shape was also sort of weird, the little bump on one end. Hmm. My landlord seemed... And there's the photo of it. My landlord seemed... It looks like a tiny cabbage. My landlord seemed unbothered for the most part. Uh, okay, dude. And he told me to call him if I heard anything else. I went inside and headed to my office to see if I could figure anything out about this marble that somehow made its way into my ceiling. <laughs> I, had nothing to go, I had nothing to go on, and in short, I didn't really learn much, but I did figure the bump on the marble. Apparently, in the early 1900s, they made marbles by hand and, and cut them with big metal scissors, which would mean the marble is probably really old. Anyway, now I have a decrepit old shoe and a marble sitting on my dresser. I guess this is the new normal. Quite. Tuesday, the 12th of December. Sorry for the long break. I haven't been feeling great the past couple of weeks and I haven't had time to update. There also wasn't much to say for the most part. I wasn't sleeping well and I was having weird dreams, but they were vague and hard to describe. I'm sleepy all day long and I've been getting sudden bouts of dizziness. I, cl I choked it up to always having earbuds crammed in and made a mental note to get my ears checked. Other than that, things were pretty quiet. I sort of fooled myself into thinking that finding those items in the attic somehow ended all of this. Not that that would make much sense. Well... But last week, something started to happen. Late on Wednesday, I woke up with a start and felt something strange. Strange? Like something had just been watching me. I turned on the light, but I was alone. Still, there was a tangible feeling of badness? Everything felt wrong, sort of like when you have the flu and you wake up at night and can't really tell where you are for a minute. <clears throat> it was a feeling I'm used to. It always accompanies David. 
People tweet at me a lot saying they might he might just need help, but I'm certain that's not the case. Every time he shows up, I feel a palpable sense of malice. That's what I felt that night. Malice. Dread. But still, I was alone, and I was so tired, I wound up just going back to sleep. I've been so exhausted recently, I can barely function. The next night, the same thing happened. I woke up suddenly, feeling like I just missed seeing something. Like a candle had just gone out, and I could still smell it. I thought about using the pet cam from the living room to monitor my bedroom while I slept, but the cord was too short to get the camera high enough to see the entire room. So I improvised. I downloaded an app that takes a photo every 60 seconds oh, and set my phone on top of a bookcase. It's almost seven feet tall, so I had a pretty good view of my bed and the surrounding room. Then I went to sleep. Just like before, I jolted awake hours later, feeling the same unease. I turned on the light and hurried out of bed to get my phone from the bookcase. There were probably 350 photos to scroll through. No, 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 Matt, no, no, if no. the last one shit you up, please brace yourself. Brace. I'm looking down the stairs to make sure no one's creeping up behind me. The vast majority of them were me sleeping in an empty room. It's sort of dark, but you can see me sleeping. I left a couple of night lights on just in case anything showed up. But the first hundred or so photos, it's just me in an empty room. And there he is. You can see him in bed, all puddled up. Had the brickwork on his wall there. It's nice, isn't it? Got a couch at the end there, dresser. <laughs> then suddenly, he was there. Standing on the nah. chair at the foot of the bed. Nah. Staring at me. Nah, mate. What is that? So it's where it was last time. That we posted photos. It sat on the couch. <clears throat> Oh, In the man. next photo, from a minute later, he seems to be staring straight up at the ceiling, just staring. Oh, mate. Yeah? Now, if this is a prop, which of course it is, it's a fucking good prop. Yeah, I was thinking, how's he doing that? Then he appears to collapse on the chair. The next dozen photos are all the same. He's completely lifeless. At first I thought he was dead, which obviously doesn't make any sense. No. I looked over at the chair, half expecting him to still be there, but it was empty. Did you see the sort of slumped shape on yeah, the camera? Yeah, yeah. But then, in the next photo, he's gone. The room is totally empty again. He's gone in the next several photos too. I figured maybe that was it. But I kept swiping through. About 15 photos later, he was back, standing next to the bed. Just like the last time I saw him. Fuck me. Yeah, you see it? Fuck me. Stood next to the mattress, head craned down, looking down at Adam. Then when my heart... Then my, that's when my heart started to race. I didn't want to look at the rest, but I knew I had to. I swiped to the next photo. My heart sank in my stomach. He was on the bed. Inches oh. from me. Staring oh. down at me. Sleeping. Ah. Yeah? So what we're looking at, gentle listener, is a photo of a man in a duvet, on his mattress, fast asleep, whilst this toddler-sized thing with a dented, bald, creepy head is standing next to him, looking down at him. Uh. There's the next photo. Ah. Mm. Next one's worse. In the next one, He's staring at the camera. I don't like this anymore. After that, there's seemingly nothing. He disappears again and the rest of the scroll's just me alone in my room. Oh, it's going to be right in front of the camera, isn't it? That is until the last photo. Right in front of the camera, isn't it? Here's the last photo, Matt. Ah! Oh! There's something clearly trying to climb up to get to the camera. Oh, no. All you can see in the photo, guys and gals, is the room, but there's something in the lower left corner obscuring a big portion of the picture that looks like a balding, like, wiry hair-covered scalp. Whatever he's using for that prop is really good. Yep. I'm at a loss for words. That malformed ear, that stringy hair... I didn't even know what to think. I looked all over my room but couldn't find anything. And honestly, I've been so exhausted, I didn't know how to process it. Even now, all I want to do is just go to sleep. That was the last update on December the 13th, 2017. He has been around. Oh, hang on. Uh Uh-oh. 
Looks like there's been a couple developments. Uh oh, scroll back. He's not added them yet, so let's have a quick look. Uh, final post Christmas treat, gentle listener. Oh god. So I've been away for a couple weeks. (coughs) This is on Twitter now. This isn't on his storyfy yet. I went home to Montana for the holidays and almost immediately started to feel better. Less tired, less foggy. Up until now, I haven't really entertained the thought of moving, thinking that David would probably just follow me wherever I go. But when I left for Montana, everything seemed to improve. Like maybe David wouldn't follow me after all. Maybe he was tied to the house, not me. Being home felt safer and I managed to relax a little bit. I even started browsing listings for new apartments back in New York. The last thing I want to do is move into the middle of winter, but after the past few months it seemed like it might be worth it. I felt like there might be a way out. But after a few days, I started to feel strange again. One night, I got up to go to the bathroom, and as I stood there in the dark, I couldn't help feeling like there was something moving outside the bathroom window. The bathroom looks out into a backyard, and it was pitch black. I could barely see anything, but it's Montana, and there are animals passing through all the time. Sure enough, in the morning, I found animal tracks through the snow. I don't know the specific animal. Deer or elk. It's little sort of trotters. Yeah. The next night, the same thing happened. I got up in the middle of the night, thought I saw movement in the blackness outside. This time I stood at the window and gazed out, straining my eyes to see, waiting for them to adjust to the night. For a long time I stared out into the snowy darkness, but couldn't see any movement. Then, just as I was about to turn away, I saw something lurch off to the right and disappear from view. Again, it was too dark to make out the animal, but it could have been anything. Maybe a coyote or something. Morning... As I was getting out of the shower, I glanced out the window and noticed tracks behind the garage. Ooh, nice. I couldn't tell what they were from the bathroom, <clears throat> so I got dressed, put on my coat, and went outside. When I got up close, my heart practically stopped. They weren't tracks. They were footprints. Really small footprints. And there's the photo. <sighs> there they are. They walk along the side of the building and down the bank. I followed them across the backyard, but they disappeared into the ditch out back. I stood there in the snow, not knowing what to do. Oh. What could I do? Call the cops and tell them I found footprints nah. in the snow? The last couple of nights, I was too scared to leave my room. It had been uh, If it had been David out there in the snow, it meant that he could follow me anywhere. No matter where I moved, he could find me. I felt helpless. I flew... Oh. Move him downstairs, it's Lucy getting home. Do you mind? We're recording a Dear David podcast and shitting ourselves. Uh... (laughs) I flew back to New York after Christmas, back in my apartment. It seemed like it was at square one yet again. I've tried everything I can think of. I've saged my apartment. I've hired a medium. Nothing has worked. And worse, I still feel him at night, watching me from different corners of my room, always getting closer and waking up right before something happens. For the past few nights, I've been using that app that takes photos every couple minutes, but nothing has shown up. For whatever reason, it doesn't seem to work anymore, but I've left it running just in case. It's picked up absolutely nothing, save for one thing. Last night. Last night was particularly bad. I felt sick and had nightmares all night. I dreamed that David was hovering in the corner by the ceiling, far off the ground. He was mouthing something, but I couldn't hear any words. Then he was hovering above my bed, staring down at me, his mouth moving faster than it should be. I I couldn't move. I could only look up at him. Suddenly, he plummeted downward, and I felt this huge pressure crash onto my chest. I woke up gasping, the wind completely knocked out of me. I sat up and looked around frantically, heaving for air, but there was nothing. When I caught my breath, I retrieved my phone from the dresser. The photo roll showed nothing of note save for the last photo, taken just a moment before. There it is. The shape is directly above the lump that is Adam in the bed. I don't know what to do. I'm at a loss. I just don't know. Now let's check his tweet feed. That was the last time he tweeted, January the 3rd. January 3rd. So, based on the Dear David timeline, we are due an update soon. Unless, of course, he's been murdered by a ghost. Murdered by a baby ghost. Murdered by the baby ghost of Antioch. So, I guess we'll know soon. But there is where the Dear David saga is up to. Oh. And Dear David is here with us now. David, hello. Welcome to the podcast. 
Matt, please don't laugh. He's, he's made an effort to comb his hair over the dent. <laughs> now, David, um, you've been stalking poor Adam now for uh, the better part of a year. Do you not feel like it's time to leave the poor fella alone? No. Oh. No, I like his apartment. It's nice. Do you like his cats? Yeah. Right. It's cold outside. Okay. Oh, in his attic, as I usually... Used to sleep in. Yeah, the little, the little attic yeah. space. In the... I left me shoe in it by accident. You did, yeah, you did. And yeah. it fell on him, it was really funny. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. <laughs> well, David, um, when can we expect the, the new season of Dear David? We're predicting <laughs> round about this week sometime. Uh, I'm not permitted to say. Oh, you, are. you signed an NDA. S- spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> and if you told us, you'd have to kill us, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, I would. Oh. Dear David, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you can buy Dear David's new book, hashtag I'm fucking scary from all good stockists as of next week. Album drops middle of uh, October. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dear David. Oh, just in time for Halloween! Oh, wait, no, it's four months late. Oh. oh. Well, speaking of late, we've got a couple of emails. Hey! Uh, and it's also getting on, so we should... Uh, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we do a, we'll do a couple. We'll save some for next week. Um, oh, baby cakes. Because the first one we've got is Titanic! It's huge! Um, this is a little review of um, Twice Upon a Time. Ah, yeah. That came in just... In reference to our previous podcast. It came in just under the wire. Um... Last last week, this is from Dan Opie. It dropped on us like a like a marble in a shoe. Yes, he says greetings, uh, beautiful big damn princess. Um, <laughs> he'd like to open by introducing myself to you as someone who has followed your show since shortly after it began and who enjoys your weekly output of gorgeous nonsense. So much so, in fact, it's somewhat of a reliable highlight of each week. Hey. I must say, it was amusingly strange at first because I remember watching Chris back when he was known as Yonko. He's always been Yonko to me. Where did that come from, Chris? Yonko? I, I'm never going to tell the full story. I'm sure I've told the full story, but I'm, I'm not going to reiterate it simply because it refers to two other people drinking and coming up with stupid nicknames. Good. And I don't want to encourage drinking amongst CBC Good. fans. But I'll say this. There might be some events uh, in a couple months' time where you can ask me in person. So uh... keep your peepers peeled. Watch this spread. Um, to hear you in something rather different from a children's environment was strange, <laughs> but fun. Yeah, I can imagine that. A phrase which could up the whole big damn show, really. Anyway, <laughs> subject of this email: Twice upon a time. Now, my opinion on Capaldi and his era is a little different to yours. I always loved his Doctor, in spite of the writing, simply because of Capaldi's performance. Fair play. And the only time I found it tricky was Series 9 when his character was forced to swing wildly between episodes, but I put that down to And Clara's... it's weird, he kept throwing his keys into the bowl yeah, and, and just, just, just like just sorting off. Don't with... know the different one at night. Yeah. Uh, I put that down to Clara's poisonous effect on him. Oh! Oh, snap! Clara is something I agree with you completely on. She was a fucking shit stain all over what could have been a <laughs> Times decent Doctor Who. Oh! Savagery, Dan! I like it. Savagery! Um, series cutting, 8 was and most... cutting and cutting and <laughs> cutting and cutting. Series 8 was mostly forgettable <laughs> with some standout exceptions. Series 9 was better with some great stories, but also utter abominable shite like hell bent. Mm-hmm. Um, Heaven Sent was quite good, that's the annoying thing. Um, yeah. But all these Christmas Probably specials... the last two minutes. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, I actually found rather fun and enjoyable. Then, of course, we get Series 10, which had my fave New Who TARDIS team, and which I loved all of. Yes, even that Munch of the Jet, please forgive me. Never! Oh, finale... go on, then. <laughs> I thought the finale was a great ending for the era. Not melodramatic, just personal stakes, great performances, and some beautiful writing. Which brings us to Twice Upon a Time. I was worried when I heard this episode wasn't meant to happen, and more worried when I heard the plans for the first Doctor, but I actually really enjoyed the episode on Christmas Day. And I found that if you focus on Capaldi's glorious bouffant space hair and pretend the sexist <laughs> jokes aren't happening, then the episode is a really magical, heartfelt send-off for Capaldi and Moffat and even Murray Gold with that tour of his greatest hits on the soundtrack. I enjoyed that it was a continuation of the personal tone of the previous finale rather than making it a grand affair, even with the nice surprise return of a character we were almost surprised to have missed. Rusty! I didn't miss Rusty. I'm glad um, you did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, cool. <laughs> If it works for you, 
Who am I to judge? Um, I even let Clara pass. Although if Rusty had appeared in shots of tenant style, it would have been better. The regeneration itself was beautiful and perfect for Capaldi, even if he didn't have a weird tangent about his name and the new Doctor's introduction was just, oh, brilliant. Children can hear it. Uh, Aye, children can bloody well hear me name. I'll do a nut so the TARDIS literally throwing it out at the pressing gun button at the first image to convince everyone. Sorry, what? With that... I closed this email. It's, I apologize, it's hideously long. But with my introduction out of the way, we can go to the normal length emails. And the future. Good to know. Keep up the stellar work, <laughs> my boys! That comes in from Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Um, Dan, Dan, the lovely man who um, sent an email in. We'll do using what? his fingers and his dreams. And we'll do the short one and then we'll leave the others for next time. Um, so if you don't get your email right out this week, don't worry, you'll get it next week by Jingle. We'll get to them all eventually. Um, Tom Monte says, Greetings, Chris. Greetings, Matt. Oh, Different voice. New voice um, Tom Mon. Tom. Mon. Happy to hear that one of you has finally gotten round to Series 3 of Black Mirror. Aha. Hope you enjoyed it, Chris. Would you be able to rank the six episodes from worst to best? I only had one from that season I didn't get enjoyment out of, and that was Men Against Fire. As for Season 4, I'm not quite as enthusiastic, but I'll touch more on that once you've actually seen it. Which episode's twist was most shocking for you? Matt, I hope you'll find the time or energy to catch up on it soon so that I can discuss the spoiler. Have a lovely week. <laughs> Tom Monte. Oh, I love you. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, I don't think worst to best or best to worst, my thing, I like them all. So, uh, but in terms of like ones I preferred, I think the ones I, I think the ones I like the most in the series, I, on a sheer like just. I I'm love th- all my children <laughs> equally because I'm a big hippy dippy dingo. On a sheer anthology level, I like the fact Playtest was probably the most straightforward Black Mirror ever in terms of... Oh, there's always one that's your favourite. No, but you know what I mean? Like, no, you know I mean? Like, this, one, this one's a horror. Like, this is just horror. Um, as horrible and as uncomfortable as it made me feel, Shut Up and Dance was brilliantly told television. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up and dance. Ow. And I think as far as... Like, I think twist's the wrong way to describe it because they don't all have, like, a twist, but they do all sort of have a moment or two where you go... Oh yeah! Either at you realizing what it's about, yeah. Or there's the, the the bit where the penny drops. Yeah, for me, that is either Man Against Fire, a Man Against Fire, or Shut Up and Dance for this series. Mm. Um, they both have quite grim, dark endings. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I really dug it, and I, I'm looking forward to tucking into series four. Um, I don't know much about it other than um. USS Callister, Callister, whatever it's called, the opener, is feature length and is primarily a comedy. Yes. So, bring it on. We'll see what it's like. Shamone! Check, check, de cone! Check, check, de cone! As we all used to say in the 80s. Um, I wouldn't know. Have we got time to sneak in one more, do you think? Uh, we could do another cheeky one. Um... It better be another cheeky. Another cheeky one? How long if is If it isn't this? cheeky, I'm gonna shit my pants. Uh... We've got two from Luke. I'm going to do the shorter one of the two, and we'll save the actual, the, the, meaty, the meaty one for next email. week. Um, the meat mail, if you will. Hello, it's Luke's friend here. As a big fan of your <laughs> intro for Luke's channel, it was great to hear you leave a message for me. I'd just like to say that I wasn't gazing upon your face, Chris, but repeating my favourite line from the intro and gazing upon the ginger's face. Fair enough. Probably still equally... As creepy. Yeah, Luke should put out a restraining order. Goodbye, Luke's friend, the friend who probably won't listen to this unless Luke shows me it. Okay. A little, little creeped out by the lack yeah. of name of Luke's friend here. Dear, dear David. Oh, good lord. Um, it's him. And yeah, like I say, we've got... And his weirdly quiet, hushed Yorkshire accent. We've got a meaty one from a... Uh, from Luke that we'll save till next week. Like the distracting name on the butcher's place that Mike delivers to in the 2017 It movie, is it Quality Meats? It's my favourite set detail mm. in the whole movie. All the subtle stuff is brilliant. Mm. But rewatching it last night, it's just Quality Meats is the name of the shop. And just 
me and Lucy just turned each other and went, Quality me! Quality me! Oh, and I can't think of anything more meaty to end the podcast on than quality meats. There's nothing meatier than a... Asteroid. Beef meteor. <laughs> Isn't that the name of a pizza? We should get sponsored by a fast food the place. The beef meteor! <laughs> the beefior! Oh my god. We'll get in touch with that burger place and say, we've got some ideas for you. We should be like, yeah, guys, hey, could this, we be the official podcast of that burger This place? is your sci-fi themed burger, the Beefior. <laughs> As a tie-in to everyone's favourite Eddie Murphy superhero vehicle, Meteor Man. <laughs> Remember then that was a thing? Yeah. What about Blank Man? I haven't seen either of those I'm movies. shooting them. Sorry, drawing them. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Um, oh, I get... wondered why it wasn't happening for me. Oh, don't worry. I, I just thought I was Baron Chris. Oh, wow, he actually threw a keyboard <laughs> across the room. If you want to join uh, me and heavily medicated next week, Matt, for another big time cast. to me all these years. We'll be back next week here on the iTunes and the YouTube. I've been blaming myself. You can get in touch at bigdamncontact at gmail.com or tweet us at bigdamncast. If you've got a ghost story of dear David of, of scale and majesty of your own, let's then know keep it to yourself it. and put it on Twitter! Or something like that. Uh, and if you are carrying the antidote, keep it to yourself. I'm more intrigued to see how this plays out. Speaking of playing out, here's the music. See how it works. Yeah. Playing as. Playing was out. Fading in. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>